painting. I like that. Good to see. Yeah. Well, Big 12 and this, whenever they hold me. Yeah. Huh? Every, so far, so good. Okay, we are joined now to uh, kick off the uh, Dallas portion of the NCAA uh, championship with the Raiders from Wright State University. We have uh, three student athletes during this 15 minute period. Uh, we have um, Grant Benzinger, Mark Hughes, and Loudon Love. As we said earlier, please raise your hand. We'll bring the mic to you and state name and affiliation. Okay, Casey, here on the first on your side, guys, on your right, be the first question. Uh, this is for Grant and Loudon, Wendell Barnhouse with The Athletic. Uh, could you guys talk uh, and explain what Ryan Custer's presence and his injury has kind of meant to the team this year? And I know he was present there when you guys won the automatic bid, but uh, what's it been like having him around the team this year? Um, it's something special for sure. Um, now we've been able to get him on the road with us. It's a different aspect, uh, being able to have him at our side all the time. And I mean, we have shirts with it on him. Some of the guys got tattoos for him. I mean, he, he is the heart of this team. Um, you know, he's, a, he's got the hardest job of us all waking up every day, uh, pushing through some obstacles that some of us have never even faced. And, um, I mean, it's just, it's, it's good to know he's there uh, with us and that we can play for him. Yeah, we're, uh, we're super thankful that his family and uh, him are able to come out here with us. Uh, we were so happy he was there with us at uh, Motor City Madness. And um, for him to be on the court with us to celebrate, uh, it was a special moment. Other questions? Okay, guys, to your left, here on the inside aisle. Josh Peter with USA Today for Loudon. Um, can you explain why you changed your name and what was involved? Just wonder if your family was excited about your changing it. And um, yeah, it's my mom's maiden name. My parents were divorced since my dad for a very long time. And uh, my grandpa helped my mom and I for quite a time after her divorce. Uh, so it's kind of paying tribute to him and my mom for all the hard work they put in. Other questions? Okay. We'll stay here on the uh, left, inside aisle. 
Loudon, Shannon Ryan, Chicago Tribune. Loudon, um, your journey's been pretty interesting to get to this point. Just with uh, <laughs> your, you, you were a football player, and just what was the decision? Um, I know you had an injury. Did, how much did that play a part in going the basketball route for you? Um, not a huge part. Basketball was always where my heart was at, and then Coach and Aggie being able to keep his recruitment with me after my injury um, made a big part in staying with him as well after he transferred to Wright State. Um, you know, the coaching staff there is just something special. Okay, we'll move back to this right side on the front row. Yeah, uh, Tom Archdeacon, Dayton, for, for all you guys. Uh, when did Coach Nagy put the, uh, I don't know, plant the seed that, hey, you can be a championship team or you can get to the, I mean, did that start right when he came or this year or, or, or when? Grant, why don't we uh, start with you on that answer? Um, he planted the seed in the summer. Uh, he saw the pieces we had. He, he knew what was coming back, and he, he planted, in then, planted us then. But, uh, you know, we started out 0-3. Um, some of us didn't really believe. And then uh, I would say around the Georgia Tech game when we beat them, we, we really bought in. And uh, ever since then, it's been a completely different team, uh, different mindset, different attitude. And that was uh, the turning point for us. OK, Mark? Um, definitely, I would say he's always uh, believed in us. And we really, at the beginning of the season, like Grant said, we didn't see it uh, starting out on three. But again, like around Georgia Tech, when we got that huge win, we just thought, you know, we could do this. Why not us? And um, ever since then, we just been playing with unbelievable confidence and taking it one game at a time. And really, we just picked up some big wins. And now we know that this shouldn't be just like a once in 11 years thing. It's why not every year, like Coach Nagy been saying. So. Hey, Loudon. Um, yeah, like the guys have said, starting 0-3, uh, but close games. You know, loss at Loyola. They're here in this tournament. And then uh, overtime loss to Miami, Ohio. So they were close games. So there were nothing to hang your head about too much. But we still believed then. And then, like they all said, the Georgia Tech game was probably a good turnaround for us. Uh, where we came together the most after one of our worst losses all year at uh, Missouri State. Other questions, okay, here on the right. Mark, Wendell Barnhouse from The Athletic. Uh, Tennessee apparently kind of turned its season around this year by really stressing physical defense and being, you know, really tough uh, garden people, that sort of stuff. What have you seen from looking at them? How do you guys counter that? And have you gone up against teams that have had that similar kind of philosophy this year? Um, I feel like we haven't seen a team this physical. Uh, Coach Nagman stressing that just the – Pure physicality of the game is going to be so much different. And not to be reactive because they're a much bigger team, and we really don't want them to throw the first punch. We got to come out and attack them. So just really being more physical is a big key for us to win the game. Let's move to the left. Josh Peter again with USA Today. A little bit of a curveball for all three of you, but um, I'd like to hear your thoughts, if possible, on gun control in light of all the gun violence we've seen here recently. You think the laws are adequate? and is it something you've thought about over the past few years or even recently? And you won all three? OK, Loudon, we'll let you take that one first. <laughs> um, you know, I haven't been too in touch with it other than the, the major happenings and issues. Um, and I think it, it plays a part with us because we're on a university campus as well. Um, you know, just safety of everyone is a big issue. Um, uh, I don't know. Um, I, like personally, I feel like something needs to be done just because uh, it's been happening so frequently. Again, I'm not too familiar with everything that's going on, but I feel like with reoccurrences like this, I feel like something needs to be done because obviously things think like people aren't safe and it's not working how it is now. So, uh, no comment on that one. Okay, here on the right, oh. in the middle. Mike Griffith from SEC Country. I got a basketball question for Grant and Loudon. If you guys could talk about potential matchups, Admiral Schofield and Grant Williams, what you've seen on film, and, and just your thoughts if, if you played against similar players to this, maybe the Georgia Tech game. Grant, you want to answer that? Um, for Admiral, uh, we got a guy here that was first team all defense. Uh, he'll probably be matched up with him. And then uh, Grant, it'll be uh, Loudon Love and Parker Ernsthausen just uh, – splitting time with him. So, you know, we have a plan. Uh, they're, they're two really good players. Uh, Grant Williams, SEC Player of the Year. A lot of respect for them, the way they play. They play the game the right way. And uh, we're, we're going to have a lot of fun competing against them and uh, hope to be uh, the better team that day. Hey, Loudon. 
Uh, yeah, like Grant said, they're tough offensively and defensively. Um, definitely respect their games uh, inside and out. Um, just physical guys all over, and we got to be able to uh, outwork them from the jump and be able to go throw the first punch, like Mark said, from the jump. Okay, guys, we'll move to your left here in the middle. Yeah, Joe Rexford with the Tennessee, and following up on that, Mark, ha having looked at film of Admiral, have you seen a player quite like him, and how would you assess him as a player? Um, I wouldn't say I've seen a player like him just because physically how he's built, uh, 6'5", 240, so he, he got me by about 50 pounds. But, um, yeah, he's a good player. He's very physical, a good shooter, really just an all-around good game. Uh, I haven't really guarded anybody in a post. Like, he's, he's probably going to post up, so something I got to work on. And, uh, no, he's a good player, though, for sure. Other questions for the three guys? Okay, in the back, right in front of the TV riser. Uh, Tim Roberts, CW33 here in Dallas. So this one's for you, Grant. As someone who was on that team that went 3-13 and 13 in conference, what does it mean for you now to be here with a shot to, you know, pull a huge upset in the tourney? Uh, it, it's huge. Um, my freshman year was a disaster. Just so many injuries, uh, not, not great attitudes on the team. Uh, and to have a complete turnaround from freshman to senior year, uh, it really sends me off on a, on a great note, on a high note. And, you know, I want to take back that freshman year for anything because it, it taught me a lot about leadership and about work ethic and what it takes to be on a good team and to lead a good team. So I'm, I'm glad it happened. Um, it wasn't an easy year. It wasn't a fun year. I'm, that off season was absolute uh, chaos and no fun. But to w get to where we are now, it, uh, definitely a blessing it happened. Any other questions? I don't see any hands, guys. We'll let you go back to your locker room and um, get ready for our practice and everything else. Uh, congratulations on a terrific season, and it's still going. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. We'll have um, Coach uh, Nagy here in about um, five minutes. We'll stay on time. Yeah, you go up the steps and then turn left, and you'll see it. As we said, Coach Nagy will be here in about five minutes to start his portion of this morning's news conference.
Okay, I think it's our window has arrived for uh, the head coach of the Raiders of Wright State University, um, Coach Scott Nagy. Coach, congratulations on a great season. Welcome to North Texas. Your thoughts on um, as you enter the tournament tomorrow? Well, I, I, I think we've obviously not had any players that have experienced this, and so things like this, uh, the, the, the attention, uh, the travel, just so many of the things that go along with the NCAA tournament that are so much fun uh, can, can be overwhelming. And so, you know, people have asked me, you, you've been there before, how do, you, how do you help these kids get through that? And my answer is <clears throat> I really don't know because I've been there before three times and we've not won the game. And so it's not like I had the answer to, to help them get through that. Uh, obviously, there are some things I can talk to them about that I've experienced, and so we've done that. Uh, but but super obviously super proud of our kids and what they've done this year and, and probably a little bit ahead of schedule of what we thought could happen. But uh, uh, they've been one of the most enjoyable groups I've ever worked with. Thank you, Coach. Hey, before we uh, start with our questions, um, SID Bob Noss, stand up and take a bow so people will know who you are and who to ask for in the next uh, few days. Thank you, Bob. Question here on the right, outside aisle. Wendell Barnhouse with The Athletic. Uh, Scott, could you kind of uh, go back and review when Ryan Custer got hurt, what your reaction was and, and what he's mean, meant to the team this season and particularly now that he's been able to travel with you guys? Uh, you know, when, when it happened last April, it, it set our team back probably about a month. I mean, it, it really hit us hard. Obviously, it hit Ryan and his family the hardest. but. Uh, he, he's been, he was such a good teammate and is such a good teammate, but, but to not have him around every day and, and to have to watch him go through and his family go through what they've, they've gone through was incredibly difficult for, for all of us. <clears throat> the, uh, you know, we're, we're just so proud of him. It's, it's a great story and everybody wants to talk about it. I wish it's a story we didn't have to talk about, uh, but Ryan has handled it so incredibly well and his family has handled it well, and uh, you know, yesterday when when we got on the ground, we 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 sat on a plane for a while because we couldn't get Ryan off, and so uh, you know, I think his family started to get a little uptight, like they were affecting the schedule, and then we got we we got to the bus, and the bus couldn't get him on, and we sat there for a half an hour, and so things were pushed back, and they they were starting to get upset, and I just went back to him, I said, look, if everything was screwed up because Ryan was with us. We, we would rather have Ryan with us. If we have to miss practice, it doesn't matter, okay? It, we would rather have all everything go wrong because we have Ryan with us than everything go perfectly and not have you here. And so we're thrilled to have you here. We, I, I want you guys to relax and just know we're happy to have you here. He, he's meant so much to our team. Obviously, we, we talked to our team a lot about courage. Uh, and a lot of times it takes one person to show great courage, and it kind of bolsters everybody else's courage. And Ryan has been that for us, for sure. Other questions for Coach Nagy? Okay, Coach, here on the front row. Yeah, Tom Archdeacon from Dayton. Scott, what kind of bolstered you back, going back to South Dakota State, when you had several rough years uh, as you t became a D1 program. You had five, six years. And what, it's just uh, you could foresee this coming or you had had success before. And, and what was it like going through that and now? <clears throat> when we made the transition, Tom, it was, uh, you know, we, we, we had won 80% of our games at Division II level. Uh, you know, in terms of percentages, I was one of the top coaches in the country. I mean, you know, it was, it was almost easy. And when we made the transition, it obviously became very difficult. We had no league. Uh, we had five years, obviously, to wait till we were eligible for anything. But even if you don't have a league, it's pretty difficult to, to, to have anything good happen to you. So we were traveling all over the country trying to play people. We, we couldn't keep players. We'd have them one or two years, and they'd transfer. Uh, and it was, in, in terms of coaching, obviously the hardest time of my life, but and really made me, uh, it made me a, a much better coach because when winning was so easy, I didn't have to do as much. We just had better players. I all of a sudden had to start coaching and because we were playing people that had better players than us, and I had to figure out how to, how to uh, be better at strategy, the X's and O's part of the game, and so it helped me there. 
it, it uh, probably helped me personally because I, I had started to just identify myself with just winning all the time, and all of a sudden I wasn't, and I, I felt like a loser. And one of the things I always told our players is whether you win or lose doesn't say anything about who you are. And it was easy for me to say that, but I didn't feel that way. And so, you know, I, I had to readjust some things in my own life. Uh, and so it was good for me that way. And I was thankful we, we got a new AD during that time. It would have been very easy for him to get rid of me. Most coaches don't make it through a Division II to Division I transition. But, but he knew enough and knew enough basketball people to know that, that you know, I could coach and that he just, we just needed the time. And he gave us the resources that we needed. And we slowly did it. We won six games, eight games, I think 10 games, 13, 14, 19. It just, we just slowly built it and, and got the kind of players that we needed. Other questions? OK. Coach on your left in the middle. Joe Rexler with the Tennessee. I was just wondering, if Admiral Schofield, how unique of a player he is and what you've seen from him recently on film and how you plan to deal with him. <clears throat> Uh, you know, we, we, we have a player in our, in our league, at Horizon League at, at Green Bay, Khalil Small, that's built like him. He's just not, he's 6'2", he's not 6'5". Uh, and, and so we, we do have some experience with it now. Khalil doesn't post like Admiral does. Uh, he, he definitely presents some problems because if you put a, a smaller person on him, he's going to beat him up, and he's, he's a tremendous offensive rebounder. If you put a bigger person on him, he can step out and shoot it and drive him. And so he does become a problem. You, you, need, you need an excellent defender on him. You need a tough person that can block him out and guard him when he puts the ball on the floor. And, you know, clearly, even in the SEC with the bodies they have, people have struggled to deal with him. And so he, he does present all kinds of problems without question. Any other questions for Coach? Okay. Well, following Follow up on that, the combination of him as he's been playing lately with obviously what Grant Williams does for them, you know, you don't see too many teams that have two guys like that around a center anymore. How unique is that sort of approach? I guess? It's very unique. And generally, when you talk about teams being physical, you, you think of the defensive aspect, that, that they just beat you up physically on the defensive end. But they, they beat you up physically on the offensive end. And if, if you don't move before they move, then it's over. If they get their body on you and they're the first to move, they're the first to create contact, then it, it, it's a problem. And they have – and, you know, it, it's not only Williams and Schofield. They, they've taught all of their, their threes, fours, and fives how to do that. Uh, Coach Barnes is – I mean, you know, the, and I've, n I've never played one of his teams, but, but having a chance to watch film on his team, he, he's, he's done an incredible job. And they – you know, not, not only in, in putting a team together and, and just, just all of the motivational aspects that go with it, but their X's and O's and their technique and, and how he coaches those guys, I know is not very easy to get most people to do, and he's done it. He's, he's done a great job. Any further questions? I think not. Okay, Coach, we'll let you go and get ready for uh, the all championship. Right. Thank you very much. Congratulations again. Thank you. Hey, Coach. Hey, Coach Nagy. Five with the next team, um, Loyola, Chicago, with the student athletes. So that will start at 11.05. Any other questions? Okay. We'll move to the left. Each of you, do you have a, a specific NCAA tournament memory that comes to mind? I mean, as far back as your, your first one that you remember watching the tournament as a kid and imagining yourself in the position you are now? All four. Um, I'll pick on you, Marcus, why don't you start? <laughs> um, I think it was my I guess like my first kind of memory of the NCAA tournament was when uh, I think where Mario Thomas hit that hit that shot when he was on Kansas. Uh, I think that that was like a 
a really exciting moment. And I, th I think that was like my first fond memory of the NCAA tournament uh, growing up as a kid. So, yeah. We'll move to Andre. Mm, I don't know. I can't really think of anything in particular. But uh, I was a big Duke fan, so just hearing about Duke every year. I've always picked them in my bracket. So, but now it's changed. How about you, Dante? Uh, for me, just coming up, you know, always seeing, uh, you know, obviously you got the Deuce, you know, Carolinas and everything. They're always having that success. Uh, but I like seeing Cinderella stories as well. And, you know, seeing teams have, like, success that people didn't expect to have. And, you know, obviously seeing, like, those one shining moment songs. And, I mean, that's something as a kid you grow up, you know, you want to be a part of that someday. So to be a part of it now is a big, you know, it's, I'm happy to be a part of it. And Clayton? Um, I grew up in Kansas, so I grew up, my dad went to KU, so I, I grew up watching KU, and uh, I remember um, KU actually, well, the Mario Chalmers shot in the national championship against M Memphis was one of the things that will always stick out in my mind, just because I was watching that game, um, and when Mario Chalmers hit that three to, to send it into overtime, uh, that was definitely one of the moments uh, that I'll never forget, and then um, also, Butler making the run when they were still in the Horizon League um, is definitely one that st sticks out to me just because, um, I mean, obviously it's, it's hard to do. It's hard to make it, make it to the national championship game from the Horizon League. Um, and they had such good teams and they played so hard. And uh, that was definitely one of the teams I remember too. Okay, let's move toward the back. Last row. Uh, TJ Mahoney, Turner Sports. Um, talk about how it feels to be the team to break the uh, NCAA tournament drought for Lo Loyola. Anybody in particular or all four? Um, who wants to take that? Clayton? <laughs> we'll let Clayton go. Um, I mean, it feels really good. I mean, uh, obviously, it's been a long time. There's, actually, there's, a, there's a ton of history around Loyola basketball um, with the 1963 team. Um, and then 1985 team was really good too. Um, it, it takes a lot. Um, it, I mean, it's been a really long time, but th the thing that makes it even more special for us to, to be the team that, that uh, has made it to the NCAA tournament is we brought like the buzz back around the campus. Um, basketball is important again around the campus and the community. Um, so it's, it's more than just us on campus. Like it's more, it's more than just us. It's about more than just us. It's about bringing basketball around Rogers Park um, in Chicago and uh, just, just seeing the smile on people's faces when they talk about Loyola basketball is, is the part that's special. Closing questions now for our student athletes. Let's go here on the uh, outside aisle on the right. Maddie Kenny from the Sun-Times for Dante. Um, a lot, we've already kind of touched on this, but people kind of see you as the Cinderella team. Even Sister Jean has a bracket called the Cinderella Dream. Do you guys view yourselves as that? I mean, we don't, like I said, we've said, you know, we obviously, you know, teams, people have picked us as a team to be the Cinderella story, but like we, we just have had blinders. As Mark has said, you know, we don't want to get too fed into the outside distractions and everything. You know, we just want to control what we can control. Uh, you know, I would say it would be great to, you know, be looked at as the Cinderella story as we try to move forward and win games. But like, our, like I said, our main focus is just, you know, buying into all the small things and, you know, just getting ready for Miami to, you know, begin that process. Last question here, right side toward the front. Josh Peter with USA Today for Andre and Dante. Apparently students across Chicago today are participating in a national walkout in protest of gun violence. Um, Chicago's been particularly hard hit. Just wonder how you feel about what's happened in the last few years with gun violence and if you have any thoughts about gun control and things that might be able to solve the problem or improve the problem. You say Dante and Andre? Okay, Dante, why don't you go first? Uh, uh, obviously, uh, me, uh, you know, living in Chicago and uh, being from Chicago, uh, I've, you know, I've lost friends to, you know, gun violence, and I've, I've seen it happen so much around the city of Chicago, and, you know, you know that, that hurts. I mean, you know, you don't want things like that to happen, but, uh, I mean, I, I don't know. I just, I think that there needs to eventually, you know, be rules where, you know, who can get, you know, the owners of guns, who can, who can own guns? I think they need to, you know, tighten down on that because I feel like there's a lot of people, especially in the city of Chicago, who own guns who shouldn't. So I think if we can, you know, somehow try to, you know, cut that down, then that'll help. And we'll finish up with Andre. Um, I guess I don't know. It's guns and the people. So um, you have two sides of the story. You have people like 
who know, like who's responsible with guns. So I wouldn't say guns are all bad, but when you have people who like misuse guns. So, I mean, I guess it's just two sides that, uh, of the story. Mm. Okay, guys. Thank, Thank you very much. Time. Thanks for coming. Good luck tomorrow. And we will have Coach Moser in just a second. Thank you, guys. Okay, we're ready to begin with the uh, head coach of the Ramblers, uh, Coach Porter Moser. Coach, welcome to North Texas, City of Dallas, the NCAA tournament, and uh, your thoughts as you begin tournament play. You know, excited for our program, the university, our guys, um, obviously to be here. Um, Dallas is a great city. I was uh, fortunate enough to coach at Texas A&M for six years and uh, recruited the area a lot. And um, my wife's from Texas. And ironically, when in 1989, when I played for the Creighton Blue Jays, our regional was Dallas Regional. I played at Dallas Region Arena. So uh, it's a really great city and excited to be back. Well, welcome back. Good to have you. <laughs> OK, Coach, question on the left on the inside aisle. David Hoffman, the Chicago Tribune supporter. How did that go? What do you remember about the, as a player being here in the regional? I remember it was, it was the same kind of feeling as in terms of the group. We had a really close family atmosphere, very close-knit group and coaching staff at Creighton. And um, we went into the game, and we were playing a Missouri team, and it's a game that just sticks in my crawl, still does. We were in control of the game, and uh, they were loaded. They had Anthony Peeler, Doug Smith, Lee Coward, Church, Byron Irvin. I mean, they were loaded, and uh, Doug Smith hit a half-court shot to, you know, we were up like six or eight, six, nine, and, and they hit the shot and went into halftime and just kind of turned the momentum. And we ended up getting beat uh, to a very, very good Missouri team back then. But the, the experience of the NCAA tournament, I've been asked this a lot, um, what's better as a player or a coach? And unequivocally, it's a player. You know, it's just you have a short window as a player. The excitement, um, it's what you, you're working on as a boy, watching it, dreaming it, um, and uh, just watching these guys up here to share this with them. Um, as you listen to them talk, you can understand every, top to bottom. We got high character guys, guys that you want to go into, um, you know, battle with. And uh, so the experience of having a close knit group is very similar to what, what I had at Creighton. Okay, coach, let's go in the back underneath the TV light there on the right. Adam Grossbard, Dallas Morning News. How have you seen Cameron Crutwig develop as his freshman season has gone on? You know, he, he's, he's the most vocal player that I've ever coached. I mean, he is locked in. He's talking ball screens. He's talking yelling. You know, I remember one of the quotes we had on our wall culture is, great defenses are noisy. And he's constantly talking, constantly talking. His confidence level um, has just risen as it went on. And I'll tell you, I, pr I probably made a mistake early on. Earlier in the year, he's, he's a, an elite passer. He's really good, old school passer. So we were running a lot of things through him. And I think he was passing, his first and second thought was pass. And it was about right around Christmas and after Christmas the conference started, I was getting mad at him because he was passing out of the post with two feet in the paint and just got on him pretty good. And he is, he is now looking to score when he gets a deep catch. And now you, you saw his scoring average just go up. He still can really pass. Everyone knows that. But he's, he's getting more of a, a, a mad mentality when he gets it down low. And I love that. And he spent a lot of time getting his body right. He lost 30 pounds in the offseason. And I think he's just scratching the surface. I think this offseason he'll be focused in on agility, you know, not only losing weight, but getting that next maturation process with, with weights and conditioning and uh, but he's a fun kid to coach because he's locked in every single day. He's locked in on scouting, what we're supposed to do. He's, he's a very, very fun kid to coach. Okay, we'll stay here on the right toward the middle. Maddie Kenny from the Sun-Times. Um, 
I talked to Steve Watson, I think, a few years ago. He's a basketball guy, obviously. And he said it takes time for a program to rebuild the way that you guys wanted to do it the right way. Did you think you would be here this quickly? You know, Maddie, I did. I did. I, you know, you always think that. And, um, you know, I, I, you, you build your program to that. And I know when we got here, we were last in the horizon. And then jumping to the valley was a, was a huge jump. And then that first year, we took a hit. And then the second year on, you know, that, which is the last four years, um, we won the CBI championship. We've won 85 games the last four years. So that's what your, you know, your vision, um, your vision is to get here. We've showed the team one shining moment. We've showed, we've had our own private um, selection so, you know, with our own team, with nobody there going, this has got to be us. So it's been more than visualization. You know, we, we, the effort these guys have put in, it's been a grassroots beat rebuild an absolute grassroots re rebuild from going to the dorms, getting trying to get students involved, to speaking at freshman orientation, to just absolutely the recruiting process of the amount of time and effort we put in that to get the right kind of kids, the right kind of student athletes to balance the education and the type of people we wanted at Loyola. So it's been grassroots um, from the very, very beginning. On the left. I think uh, Mark has talked about you talk about having blinders on yeah. and trying to you know, ignore the noise. How difficult has that been this week? You always love it when players regurgitate what you say in the locker room. You know, we talk about this laser-like focus with the guys. Because how, how the experience they went through is the last eight or nine games of our season, it was, you know, you start talking about the first four in, first four out. And that starts happening so early. And everything they heard was we weren't in. We had to win the tournament. So we kept on talking about having these blinders on and just focusing in on us, our locker room, what we could control. And then we went into the tournament. We won the league, then we went into the tournament. It was the same thing. We didn't talk about the at-large bid. We didn't talk about that. And that's what we've been talking, that, that's kind of what we mean by that. And the same thing with the distraction. We've had more distractions around Chicago. I love it. I mean, it's, it's, I mean you've been there, David. Have you seen that there's been more people talking about Loyola basketball in 30-some years? And the guys are handling it because they're high character guys. They're, they, they know, I mean, every practice, every film session has been locked in. Um, and obviously the NCAA tournament is another level of attention, spotlight, which is great for them. That's what they wanted. And I'm, you know, their, their focus hasn't changed. This week of practice, this for these film sessions has been good and the, the blinders have got to be strictly on Miami. What we have to do for ourselves and what we have to do with Miami. Nothing further. Um, it is, it is those, those two hours when we play them Thursday. Anything else for Coach? Okay. Again in the middle on the right. You found DeAndre oh, at a, I'm sorry, at, at a junior college around here. Do you remember that and how difficult was that to find him? No, what, what, you know, you, you, there's all these reports, and we were following them. And we, you know, one of the things we like people that they, when the first report we read on him is that he, he gets a lot done. He's very efficient, but he's undersized. And sometimes high majors read that word undersized, and it scares them off. And it's never scared me off. I, I'd rather have a six-five guy that is unbelievably efficient. So then you started digging in, and Andre was the second or third leading field goal percentage player in the nation, in the nation in junior college. Well, it tra that translates. I remember Majerus used to always talk, that translates. Last year as a junior, he was in the top five in the nation in Division I in field goal percentage. So we flew out to the national tournament to watch him on this stage, and he played, uh, I think it was Northwest Florida, a team that was loaded. I think they ended up winning it all. And, I mean, he played really well against 6'9", six, 6'10 six, guys. Had a, I mean, he had just had a knack to get it done, and I thought he'd be perfect for what we tried to do. The fact that he was 6'5 and not 6'7", six, 6'8", six, th those things don't bother me. I, I like guys that that can get it done rather than, you know, just looks good to announce to your boosters that you guys signed a 6'8 guy. Okay, here on the middle. A lot right. of the experts are calling Loyola a team that can, you know, shake things up and be a Cinderella team. Do you guys see yourselves as that? No, we haven't. Um, Maddie, we haven't talked about it a lot, and I'll tell you why. It's just, we've always said the predictions are, are only from within your own locker room. We weren't picked to win the Missouri Valley Conference. We weren't picked to finish second. And the same thing. I mean, it's – it's unfathomable to think that you got a team like Miami. They finished third in one of the best conferences in the country in the ACC. I've been watching them on tape, extremely well coached, space it. Um, you know, Lonnie Walker a, a, is a pro. I mean, he really is a good player. They got a ton of good players. I mean, I love what one of our guys said about respect. 
We've talked about it in our locker room all year long. We said it when we went to Florida. We said we went into Indiana State. We said it to Northern Iowa. Every team we said, this day and age, respect is not a weakness. You know, sometimes people think you can't respect. Respect's not a weakness. And, we, I mean, these guys have an unbelievable amount of respect for Miami. And we, we're, all our focus is on what we have to do to try to contain their athleticism because they're, they're extremely ath athletic. But we haven't bought into this, you know, it's – it's, I can't imagine what they're saying. I mean, they finished third in the ACC. I mean, they're really, really good. Okay, again on the left. Porter from uh, Jerry Harkness to Gene Sullivan <coughs> to Al Frederick Hughes. I mean, this, when you do something like this, a lot of the history of your program becomes a part of the present. How have you tried to incorporate that so these players are, you know, live that tradition and don't, don't forget that, <coughs> excuse me, now? You know, David, they, uh, with, um, I've said it from the beginning. I've had the guys talk to them. Um, I've, I've, from the very beginning, I've said the past is part of our future. And when you start talking about the 63 national team, national championship team, and what they went through with segregation and the game of change, I think this, is, this has been one of the best things. You know, Shannon Ryan wrote a great story about um, the 63 national team. And the conversation to talk about that for young people, look it up. There's a great video on it, a great movie on it. It's, it's unbelievable what these guys went through. And then when you get to know them, you get to know J the Jerry Harknesses, the Jack Egans of that, that team, you're like, these guys did it. Unbelievable character, unbelievable guys. Um, I love how Al Frederick's era, I mean, Al Frederick called me like a, a he, he was like a, an eight, he was like he was right there himself going to the tournament. He was so excited congratulating our guys. And pride is an awesome human trait. And to see the pride coming out of Loyola alumni, Chicago, it is a fun thing for, for the Loyola University. But 100%, what they did in the past, the 63 team, and what they went through and persevered has been something that's been talked about with our guys in our program. And I love that this NCAA uh, run here, getting in the tournament, has brought that 63 team and what they meant to the country at that time to light. Hey, here in the middle on the right. Coach Wendell Barnhouse from The Athletic. I um, hope this hasn't been talked about, but the fact that uh, you're kind of being able to bridge Coach Majerus to this team. Uh, I was talking to Ben Richardson about how you explain about successful people and you can kind of emulate that sort of stuff. Can you maybe articulate a little bit more about Coach Majerus maybe having an influence on this team? 100%. I mean, Coach Majerus had a huge impact on my life, my coaching career. Um, you know, just being around a, a guy like that who thinks differently and just thinks, you know, in game preparations. But there's so many things I took from him. One of them, he was, it was amazing how he taught the game. You know, you can go to practices, you've, clinics, and people will talk about your practices, and you'll see a coach yell at a kid, all right, I want you to hard hedge the ball screen. And then you see Coach Majera say, all right, your toes have to be perpendicular facing the sideline. Your shoulders got to be ahead here. Your hips can't be, I mean, there's a million teaching points on how specifically to, te to hedge it. That's kind of how the wall of culture that we've had in our, in our program, in our locker room start. There's a lot of little phrases that he used that, you know, our guys have bought into. Um, and he was an amazing teacher. It resonated with the guys. Um, and uh, here's a great example. This was fun. I've had former players will call and they said, you know, they look, they watch a game differently. So Dante Ingram in the in the hotel yesterday, we have one of our our thing is never come off a corner shooter. Like that was a big Rick Majerus thing. Never come off a corner shooter. The corner three is the highest percentage shot. So yesterday, literally, we were in the hotel and they were watching a game and Dante was screaming because he's like, look at that guy come all the way off the corner, off the shooter, and they hit a three. And it's fun to see them look at the game differently. And that's any player that played for Coach Majerus will say that. He said, you look at the game differently after playing for Rick Majerus. I coached the game differently after working for Coach Majerus. Closing questions for Coach Mosen. Hey, Coach, over in the extreme left, toward the middle of the room. Yeah. Hi, um, from the Miami Herald. So could you expound a little bit on Miami, and do you think that they'll be, well, they said that yesterday that they are motivated by the fact that you guys are being called the Cinderella, the sleeper team, the upset team. How do you think that'll affect the Miami players, and also what about the Miami team uh, scares you, not scares you, but concerns you the most? You can use the word scare. It's, it's okay. They're unbelievably athletic and long. 
Coach Larinaga, they do a great job spacing the floor. They really space you, um, and they're going to drive you. They got guys that can shoot it. Their length, you know, we just, we just don't see length and athleticism to the level that Miami has, and they just space you. So, you know, that's one thing is, is their, their, their combination of being able to strike you off the dribble. You know, sometimes you'll have teams that can strike you off the dribble, and then eh, you can pack off and they're not great shooters. They got some big time guy, shooters on the perimeter to go with that athleticism. So, and the, the Cinderella thing, you know, it, it, it's just both teams have to look at it. Predictions, all that stuff only matter within your own locker room, what you believe and what you think. And I know, I know they're not buying into it. I can tell you right now, I'm watching how hard they play and how much they space the floor. So I know they're not buying into it. It has nothing to do with Thursday. From our end, from their end, um, it's, it's hard to fathom, like I said earlier, that you're, they're the third, they finished third in the ACC, which is like an unbelievable conference when you just start looking at it. I mean, it's unbelievable. And they finished third. And they're, um, you know, they, they check a lot of boxes. They're well coached. They're, they space the floor. They got shooters, athleticism. So there's going to be no lack of respect or no, you know, we're not looking like they're the underdog 100%. There's a ton of respect from our end going into this Miami game. All right. We're out of time for Coach because he has practice skills. Take care. Thank you. Coach, thanks for being with us. Good luck tomorrow.
Just received notice uh, that Tennessee has left the locker room and the Vols will be here in the interview room in just a bit. So media working in the workroom, Vols will be here shortly. Okay, we're joined now by the volunteers of the University of Tennessee. We have five student athletes. We have Jordan Bone, Grant Williams, Admiral Schofield, uh, Kyle Alexander, and Jordan Bowden. Questions for any of the five guys? In state name and affiliation, if you could. First question, guys, will be here on the right side toward the middle. Adam Grossbard, Dallas Morning News. For Kyle and Admiral, when Coach Barnes took over the program, what was his message to the uh, team about really his vision for what you guys could become? Kyle, you want to go first? Um, you know, uh, Coach Barnes is a really respected coach who comes from a, you know a great um, history, you know, at the um, University of Texas. So, you know, he, he kind of talked to us about you know how. You know, he, the stuff he expects, you know, our, our standard, you know, you know, the stuff that they brought from that program over to us and, you know, just everything that he wanted us to, all his visions for us and everything he wanted us to be, so. Uh, yeah, just to follow what Kyle said, uh, the biggest thing was, you know, changing the culture um, and instilling a program that uh, could, could, you know, compete with the Kentuckys and, you know, the different winning programs in the SEC. So the biggest thing was just instilling, you know, character within the program off the floor and on the floor, and also just uh, guys who are willing to work hard and go out and compete as hard as they can, no matter the outcome. And uh, for, from from that point on, we 
have been building that, and that's what our standard is. Um, especially, you know, some of our characterization traits that we have is responsibility, respect, and humility. It's things that we live by, but also being on uh, playing on the floor with, you know, just go out and compete as hard as we can, play with each other, being unselfish, and remember what we're playing for, and um, just to go out, like I said, compete hard as we can. Okay, next question will be here on the right, inside aisle. Josh Peter with USA Today. Admiral, do you think it's fair to say you've got the coolest name in the NCAA tournament, and how did you end up getting the name? Um, well, I, I think it's pretty cool. And to be honest with you, at first when I was young, I didn't like it. Um, so my parents didn't never call me by Admiral, believe it or not. They called me by my middle name, Donovan. And uh, when I was in, I think, the second grade, um, they ended up calling home and saying, Admiral hasn't been showing up to school for the last hold month. Hold on, hold on. I didn't know it was Donovan. <laughs> so they called home and was like, uh, Admiral hasn't been showing up to school for the last month. And it's only because they would call Admiral in the classroom and I wouldn't answer. Because at home and, you know, my family friends would call me Donovan. So my parents had to really teach me my name because I, I really didn't know my name was Admiral. So. But I got my name because my dad was in the military for 24 years. Uh, I was born in London, England. Um, and over there they had the Admiral Insurance, like we had the General Insurance here. And he heard it over an infomercial over the, over the radio, and he was like, Admiral, I'm going to name my son Admiral. So that's, that's how that came about. But, yeah, it's a pretty cool name. Some, it, I, I really didn't used to like it, though, when I was younger. But it, it, I've gotten used to it now. Other questions? Okay. Inside aisle left. Yeah, Kevin Brockway, Angel Sun. Question for Jordan. I think you guys led the SEC this year in defensive efficiency. Just how much of that is in your DNA, and, and how much are you going to need to rely on that to be successful in the tournament? Yeah, um, you no. Know, de defense is big when it comes to winning games. Uh, at the beginning of the season, that was that was a part of our uh, standard. Uh, just just to be a hard nosed team that that played defense really efficiently. And um, that, that's going to win us a lot of games, and it already has this season. So uh, we're just going to stay true to our standard, and we're going to perfect it, and we're just going to continue to get better at defense. OK, let's go in the front row, your left. Uh, Grant, I can't believe you haven't spoken yet, so I'll ask you. And Rob Lewis from VolQuest.com. Just you, you guys have been talking about getting here since November. Now that, now that you're here, I mean, how, how does it feel? What, what, just, what's the mood of the team? We're excited. Um, we've never been a part of this. We're thankful. Um, we're humbled to be here, and it's a blessing. For the first time, we can say we're in March Madness, and we're participating, and we're ready to get on that court and show what we got. We'll stay on the left. No one there? OK. We'll move to the right. Casey, we'll start right here. Yeah, Joe Rexho, Tennessee. And Admiral, why have you surged of late? Well, what's been? different or better for you lately, offensively? Well, honestly, I mean, I, this is my first time really playing on the wing since high school. And uh, coming into Tennessee, I was playing down low. I played, started at the five my freshman year, 6'5". Freshman playing at the five against a lot of talent in the SEC. But, you know, every year I've improved um, in a lot of ways, just getting comfortable with different positions. And uh, this year, I, you know, just changed my body and uh, the way I, you know, approach the game. and. Uh, the game just really has slowed down for me, and it's really a testament to my teammates, really, because, um, you know, at first it was a struggle, you know, not rebounding the ball, not defending, and the little things that it takes to be a, a good wing player in this league. And, you know, every day I just continue to work at it, and these guys continue to go at me. And, you know, throughout the game, throughout these games that we've had, especially league games, the games just started to slow down. And I just got back to doing things that I'm good at. You know, I'm a good mid range player, um, good on the block, uh, good on the ex extended block. and catch and shoot guys. So, you know, just playing towards my strengths and my teammates find me when I'm open and uh, they're confident in me taking taking certain shots and so is Coach Barnes. So uh, just continue to do what I work on and it's been working for me. Okay, here on the left aisle. Uh, for any of you guys, Grant Ramey, GoBalls247.com. In what ways have you guys surprised yourselves this season? I, I'm sure you expected to be here, uh, but what has been surprising about uh, yourself or your team or just any of it? for any of the five, anybody in particular? I think the biggest surprise is um, we didn't come out to compete against Kentucky. That's the biggest surprise for me. Um, and it wasn't, it wasn't something that, you know, we could put on any person. You know, it was a team effort. And uh, that first half, it really surprised. You know, after all the work that we put in, 
that we didn't come out as the team that we know that we are. And, you know, it's it's kind of alarming because, you know, that's a big stage. You know, the SEC championship game is probably going to be like what the NCAA tournament is going to be like. And we didn't come out and perform in the first half. And, um, you know, that, that kind of bothered all of us. So, you know, we've been really focused on coming out and really showing who we are and just going out and having fun like we've been doing all season. Let's um, move to the right side now here on the front row. Uh, for Jordan Bowden, uh, Mike Wilson, Knoxville News Sentinel. You kind of talked about it in the past, but do you think you guys would be the same team you are now if not for what you went through last spring with conditioning and all the extra things that uh, Coach Barnes put you guys through? Um, um, talking about the last spring, you know, it was a really a mental, you know, mental toughness for us. Just things we had to uh, go through, like the running and things. We really came together as a team. And then, you know, we went to Europe and things like that really got close to one another and playing against those pros teams and that's really helped us a along the way now and being in the NCAA tournament you know you can't take it you can't take a game for, for granted you got to go in and play you know hard as you can for as long as you can okay up front here on the left uh, Rob Lewis with VolQuest.com Jordan Bone you know one of the cliches of March is this is when guard play is really important how do you take what you did against Arkansas on Saturday and, and replicate that now on this stage yeah, um, I mean, really, it's just playing within the offense, you know, getting to my spots, um, just putting consistent pressure on the defense. Um, I mean, Arkansas, I just came out kind of hot, but I, I was still playing within the offense. But um, to be able to take that into this tournament takes a certain level of toughness and a cer certain level of concentration. Um, and I think that's something I need to improve on. So I'm going to continue to get better at that. And um, I mean, my teammates have, have faith in me and, and I'm going to continue to get to my uh, spots, continue to put pressure on defense and um, you know, hopefully the outcome is going to come out uh, in a good way. We have about four minutes left in this uh, time period. We'll go here on the right. Josh Peter with USA Today again for Grant and Admiral. Across the country today, there are students participating in a national walkout to protest gun violence. Just wondered how you've been impacted by the uh, by gun violence, and if you have any strong feelings about gun control, or what can be done to to solve or improve the problem. Yeah, I'll take that one. Um, really, it's, we believe that um, you should be safe no matter where you go in the country. Um, we try to stick, let politics be politics. We aren't politicians, so we're not going to um, comment that much further. But we believe that you should be safe no matter where you go, and we feel for those families that have been through going through it and. Well, we pray for them when we can, and um, we think about them, and that's all we can do from here. Do you want Grant as well? Okay. Um, just to add to what he said, you know, we, we, we're not politicians, um, but we are Americans, and we are citizens of this country. And the biggest thing for us is, like Grant say, said, you should be safe anywhere you go. And, you know, there should be certain regulations on, you know, guns, especially in our country, you know, as, as far as, you know, we have the right to carry and bear arms. Should be a lot more regulations on it, but at the same time, you know you have the right to do what you please with with the when you when you're bearing arms. You know that's that's one of the rights that you have, and um, I think in this country, you know, we're we're a lot more violent because of you know the way we have uh, our media, um, our, like even movies and things like that, how we portray ourselves, and you know we have to do a better job in that aspect as well. You know we got to portray, you know, safer environments throughout our country not just in movies, but in commercials and, and different ways we advertise. You know, we gotta be more cautious of those things and more um, lenient in, in that way. But the biggest thing is, you know, everyone wants to feel safe. You know, we're all Americans, we're all working together to create a safe environment. And um, I think that's, that's the main thing that they need to have in, in mind when they're creating these regulations or rules for this. Yep, thank you. Okay, hey, closing questions now, here on the left. For you, you seem like a pretty big X factor for this team when you're playing well inside. This team looks a lot different. How do you get that more consistently uh, playing to you know reach your potential and, and change things inside? Um, I think the easy answer would be that it's kind of like a mindset. You know, um, you got to go into every game um, expecting to you know uh, play well and help the team. But you know, that's something that I've been trying to do too is be more consistent with it. Um, you know. Um, I'm just trying to help the team as much as I can. You know, we got a bunch of different pieces that help contribute, and I'm just trying to contribute as much as I can towards helping the team win. So, um, but yeah, I'd probably say a mindset. You know, going into every game, um, telling myself that you know I'm going to do what I'm going to do and, and stuff like that. So, last question here on the right inside aisle. 
uh, for whoever wants to take this one, but you guys were picked to finish 13th in the SEC this year. How much of a motivating factor was that for you guys this season? Admiral? <laughs> I, like, I like the 13th question. I like that. Well, the biggest thing is, for us, we don't – I mean, we've never really looked in the media or, you know, rankings or anything because we're a bunch of two and three stars sitting up here. And what we've done this year is a testament to our hard work. At the end of the day, whatever – Whatever you put in, you'll reap the blessing. So, biggest things for us, we're going out to compete. We don't care what stars you have. We don't care, you know, if you're on the mock draft. We don't care about any of that. Basketball is basketball. The court is 94 feet. The rim is 10 feet off the ground. And you got to come out and you got to compete against me. You bleed like I bleed. You get tired like I, I get tired. So, at the end of the day, it's who wants it more. And at the end of the day, we know we put the work in. Um, and why not go out and compete as hard as we can? Why not want it more than – you know, the next guy. So we stick together and at the end of the day we'll live with the results that you know that, that it comes that we come out with. All right guys, thank you very much for coming. Uh let let you get to practice and um good luck tomorrow. Hey Tom, the S I D from um, Tennessee, why don't you wave at everybody so they'll know who to come to if they need anything. Appreciate it. Okay guys, thank you for coming. We'll have Coach Barnes here in just a second. Okay, we want to welcome back uh, Coach Rick Barnes to the state of Texas, the head coach of the University of Tennessee. Coach, congratulations on a terrific season and uh, your thoughts coming into the NCAA championship. Well, uh, thanks. It's good to be back. And uh, my thoughts are we're, we're getting ready to play a really uh, tough basketball team like that. Us, it's had a very special year. They very, very sound in the fact that they defend well, they share the ball well, a lot of movement. Uh, certainly know how they want to play the game and um, it's an early game so we're going to have to be up and ready to go and uh, but uh, our guys have worked hard and the goal from a year ago was to be part of this tournament playing this time in in March and we're excited to be here. Okay thank you coach. Okay questions here on the uh, right front uh, here on the front row we'll go with Chuck first. Chuck Carlton Dallas Morning News Rick was talking to some of your players in the locker room. One of them told a story after you were picked 13th in the league where you had a team meeting, asked the players, how many of you guys think you're future pros? A bunch of guys raised their hands, and the player said that your response was, well, nobody else thinks that. You, you remember that? And how have you kind of used being picked 13th as a motivational factor? Well, that was probably the only time I brought it up all year, honestly, uh, because when the polls come out and uh, – and, um, I'm sure I did that, and I said, well, if, we're, if, we're, if you're that good, why are we picked 13th? And so I guess we're going to have to go out, and you guys are going to have to show people you're that good. And, but it wasn't something that, again, I, I don't know after that day if I ever brought it up again, because what we talked about was uh, our own standard and what we wanted to be. You know, we go back a year ago. We were on the bubble a, a year ago, and uh, Robert Hubbs got hurt, and uh, – I told this group they weren't tough enough to take up the slack when he went down. He went, a guy averaging 16 points a game over his last five, six games. He was a non-factor, scored four or five points a game, and he could hardly do anything, but he was trying. But uh, So that was an experience to be there and not be able to win games in, in February. And what we talked about was, uh, again, uh, once we got beat in the conference term a year ago, we went back and we had one thing in mind, and that was to find out who really wanted to be a part of this, who was going to really put both feet in and go to work and had a really tough spring and um, a good summer. Then we had to, our foreign trip and and had a got off to a great start in, in the Bahamas tournament. So uh, it's been a long time coming, it seems like, but this group of guys, they've worked hard and uh, they've uh, done, obviously, much more than 
everybody else thought. I'm not sure if it was more than we thought uh, because we had a standard that every night we go out, if we prepare ourselves, we think that we can, we can win. Okay, we'll stay here on the right. Joe Rexford of the Tennessee. And Rick, how challenging has this quick turnaround been for the coaches and players? It's, 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 it is what it is. I mean, you know, we, got, we didn't get home until, what, 9 o'clock uh, Sunday night and uh, obviously played three games in three days, couldn't do anything on Tuesday, uh, on Monday other than get together and meet a little bit and then uh, get back on a plane yet, practice, get back on a plane and get here. And uh, it's, uh, it is a quick turnaround, but uh, it is what it is and you have to deal with it. We'll move to the left, coaches left. Rick, Admiral said up here a few minutes ago that, that coming out slow against Kentucky on Sunday was maybe the most surprising thing of the season for him. What went into that slow start, and, and do you worry about that now that you're here this week on a, on a similar stage? Well, again, you could say it might be the stage. You know, I mean, they were in a position they hadn't been in ever, you know, playing uh, for a tournament conference championship, and uh, and we uh, we weren't very good defensively. We uh, we weren't good, very good at all to start the game, but uh, I, you know we fought back, and I told them we're, we're going to get back in the game, and actually told them we'd win the game, and uh, we were there to do it. We made three poor plays on the offensive end uh, that cost us there at the end. That we just made three really poor decisions with the basketball, and uh, or no, uh, actually two two offensive possessions, and then we gave up two big rebounds. That was those four possessions was. Regardless of what went out, went on throughout the game, was really the difference in the game. And uh, why I can't, you know, it's the third game in three days. You know, um, Kentucky had to do the same thing. But uh, it, it, I was when I when I broke the film down to them uh, yesterday. I showed them those things. I said, you know, we can't be breaking down defensive assignments and at the end of the game not realizing what we because we'd done a pretty good job of that all year. Okay, here on the inside aisle. Right side. Rick Wendell Barnhouse from The Athletic. Um, the time you've been in the SEC, how have you seen the league improve and how much did that help you guys this year finishing uh, regular season co-champions and the increased competition, that sort of stuff? Did that sort of help you guys raise your all's game? Well, a year ago, you know, we started out with this group. Uh, a lot of, you know, we were one of the youngest teams in the country a year ago. And we started out in, uh, in Maui with uh, playing Wisconsin, Oregon to a one possession game basically, then losing to North Carolina in another game like that, and Gonzaga in Nashville. And I was telling people how good this league was a year ago because we had played that kind of schedule. And uh, obviously the teams in the tournament last year went out and did a great job. But I would go back to my first year in the league and when uh, Commissioner Sankey started talking about basketball, men's basketball, and when you look at the Southeastern Conference, I mean, it's it's an unbelievable conference. With uh, when you th talk about football, you talk about women's softball, you talk about uh, gymnastics, you talk about baseball, you go track and field, and the one sport, the women's basketball. You talk about the one sport that wasn't holding his end was was uh, men's basketball, and uh, and he pretty much challenged the coaches in the league. You know, uh, to recruit well, uh, schedule better, and uh, go out in the non-league and play people. Hired Dan Leibovich to come in to help. Hired uh, Mike Transgizi as a um, uh, consultant. Uh, hired Mark Whitehead to get our officiating going. And so a lot of credit goes there. It starts at the top that he, you know, said, hey, there's no reason, but you guys have to do your jobs. And that's basically what he said. And uh, you go back and look this year, it, it was as competitive a league as uh, I've ever been a part of. I mean, it was amazing, the competition in our league this year. And, you know, we don't play around Robin, but, uh, Every game was a, was a tough one, and uh, we've got, I, I think, the most teams in a while in the tournament. But uh, my, from the time I've gotten there, I said, I think every year we should be a team that gets eight, nine teams in the league, and hopefully we can continue to build on that and be consistent with it. Question on coaches left. Uh, Rob Lewis with LawQuest.com. Coach, two, two of your starters, two of your, the guys you depend on, Jordan Bowen and Kyle Alexander, are, are two guys that can give, seemingly can give you anything from one night to the next. How, how do you handle that going into a, a tournament like this? Well, it, it's the unknown, and you're right. I mean, uh, we don't know. Those guys have been spectacular, then they've just gone away. And uh, uh, they both have played enough basketball now that, that we should have an idea, pretty much. Well, and, it, and it shouldn't be as – I mean, they're, they're not going to play perfect every night, but uh, the key word is consistency, where uh, even on nights when they don't shoot well, 
they're impacting winning other ways. And Kyle normally does that. He really does. Um, Jordan Bone is, is, I mean, you know, he's talented, but he's got to be able to affect the game when he's not shooting the ball well, whether it's with his defense, moving the ball, passing the ball. Uh, and uh, Kyle, again, I would say that when we are really playing our best basketball is when he's really playing his best basketball. We'll move back to this side on the right. Yeah, Rick, wondering how Admiral compares to other players you've had in terms of obsessively working on his game. You hear, hear about that a lot with him. And then have you ever had a combo quite like those two and the way you use them with a center as well often, kind of rare today? It would go back, uh, the combination would be really, uh, even though LaMarcus is taller than any of those guys, we would, uh, P.J. Tucker and, and LaMarcus Aldridge were those type players that you, we could interchange them in a lot of different ways and around the rim. Now, you know, uh, neither one of those guys obviously would step out and shoot threes the way Admiral does. But uh, uh, you know what, Admiral does work really hard. He, he He's up there with his many players that uh, as many players that we've coached as being one of the hardest working guys in terms of putting time in and uh, it means a lot to him and um, but he is a guy that uh, loves being in the gym and wants to get better and as he continues to grow and can learn to keep his emotions and everything under control I mean he can he can continue to get better as a player in a reminder please state name and affiliation when you ask your question now on the front Chuck Carlton, Dallas Morning News again. Rick, you went to 16 NCAA tournaments, I think, in 17 years at Texas. What's the difference going from a situation where you clearly had things going to a building sort of situation? And also, real quickly, I think you're 4-0 in this building in NCAA tournaments. Just the familiar factor coming back here, you know, does that have any special meaning to you? Well, well, you know, I mean, I love, I love my time at the University of Texas, and I've got so many wonderful, dear friends that I'm still in touch with that I love, and I love the state of Texas. I, I, you know, it really became home to me. And but when I got to uh, Knoxville, you know, Dave Hart, uh, uh, what he and John Gilbert talked about was uh, we really want to build a program. We we want we like to like we're talking about players. We'd like to be consistent, and. Uh, I really appreciate when I go back to that first group of guys. We were picked, I, th I think, last that year and achieved a little bit more than everybody thought. But uh, and last year we came back and we, we were right there. Robert Hubbs getting hurt. But we knew that this group of guys that we brought in, that was a group of guys that we – almost the same blueprint we tried to use at Texas with uh, Royale Ivey, Brian Boddicker, Brandon Mouton, those, that group of guys. And then – we added a TJ Ford, and then from there, you know, we were able to get the program where we felt it could be, and we feel like we're in that same situation at Tennessee now, where uh, this group of guys, uh, we lose one player off this team, and over the next two years, we only lose three off this team, and we've got a, uh, some red shirts and some guys that had to have some. Uh, well, we've got three freshmen, two of them that uh, had to have red shirt years because of injuries. And so we've, we've got a good nucleus, but we know we've got to continue to build it and get stronger. And, and, uh, and you're always looking to recruit the best players in the country. But University of Tennessee, our fan base has been terrific. You know, uh, this year I think we finished in the top eight in the country in attendance. And, you know, the last game against Georgia, uh, the building was sold out when we were able to clinch a share of the SEC, and it was one of those magical nights that you'll always remember. And But uh, the state of Tennessee, the University of Tennessee, uh, have really gotten behind this basketball program. We appreciate that. In the middle. Stephen Hoggs with the AP. And, and Rick, he kind of asked a little bit I was going to ask you, but being back here and, and being in a familiar place, Big 12 country in Dallas, does it stir up nostalgia? Does it stir up any memories, any good memories for you? Any bad memories oh, for well, you? I don't have to come back here to have good memories about Texas. I mean, uh, I've got friends I talk to a lot, and, uh, and my daughter still lives in Austin with uh, my grandkids. and uh, So I, I don't have to come back. I mean, the, the uh, way I feel about the University of Texas, I, I, I don't think that will ever leave because, I again, working at the university with – you know, DeLos Dodds, Mac Brown, Augie Garrido, when you go down the line, I mean, it's been, uh, it was a great, it was a great time. It really was. And uh, I just feel that God had a, another plan for me to be in Knoxville, Tennessee, and I'm thankful for the blessing that he's given me. And 
maybe when everybody thought it was a bleak situation. I mean, I've again, I've met and made some just absolutely wonderful friends in Knoxville, Tennessee, and uh, I'm three hours or really two and a half the way I drive from my hometown in uh, North Carolina, and I've uh, gotten to see my mom a little bit more than she's 87 now, and, and so that's that's been a good thing too. So uh, like I said, I think that God had a plan for the whole thing, and uh, and I'm just thankful and blessed, to be quite honest. Hey, Coach, I think we're out of time. We'll let you um, get out of here and get ready for practice. Thank, right. thank you, thank guys. you very much. Thank you guys, too. Thanks. Good luck tomorrow. Right. Thanks.
media in the workroom. Uh, we're told that uh, Miami is approaching the interview room and could be on stage in just about a minute or so. Some quick housekeeping notes. Remember, please silence your cell phones inside the interview room. No video of any kind, cell phone, TV camera, whatever. No video of any kind uh, can take place here in the interview room. Uh, when you ask your question, please wait for the microphone and state name and affiliation, okay? And if you could direct your question to the specific student athlete. Hey, guys. <clears throat> From you. Okay, we are joined now by uh, the student athletes from the University of Miami, um, Jaquan Newton, Chris Likes, and Lonnie Walker the fourth. Let's um, go with questions for the three guys. Right here in the middle, first question. Uh, Ryan Baker from CBS2 in Chicago. Uh, you guys come in as a six seed, going going up against uh, an 11 seed. Uh, they've won 28 games. A lot of people are picking Loyola as an upset special. Uh, does that get your attention even more? How do you view this team coming in that's won 10 games in a row? Um, they're a very talented team. Uh, not everybody in this ta in this tournament is very talented, and uh, so you got to be good to get here. But uh, we just watch film on them. You know, we just go out there and just play hard. Uh, everything to take care of itself. You know, we got full respect for the team. Uh, they're very good. And they got talented guards. Uh, they got a great big man. So, you know, we're going to take advantage of you know, the pick and roll and stuff like that. Okay, guys, we'll go to the uh, left side of the room, toward the front. Uh, hi, for Lonnie and Chris, the two freshmen, can you talk about actually being here in your first NCAA tournament and what's it been like compared to what you probably anticipated? coming up in high school? Chris? Uh, I mean, it's, it's everything I've anticipated. Um, I'm definitely excited to be here. Uh, definitely excited to have this type of opportunity. Um, not many people get to uh, play in the March Madness as a freshman. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to definitely take advantage of it, um, give 100% when I'm on the court. So uh, I know the rest of my teammates are going to do the same. Lonnie? Um, with me, it was kind of just how it would honestly look. You know, once I set foot and committed to the uni University of Miami, uh, this is definitely one of the goals that I expected, you know, this team to accomplish, and that was to make March Madness. So um, now that I'm here and, you know, I've been consistently thinking about how it looks, how is, how it is, how is it going to be and everything, uh, it's been uh, going past that. You know, I'm really shocked with how everything is going and how, um, structured, uh, how things are. So I'm very excited and I can't wait to step on the court. Okay, let's move to this side, right side. Josh, Peter, USA Today for each of the players. Um, today there's a national student walkout in protest to gun violence and I think it was largely spurred by what happened in Parkland. Considering you guys are just an hour away, how did that impact you and do you have any thoughts on gun control and in addressing this problem? Uh, Chris, why don't you go first? Um, it kind of, it like, for me, it's, um, you know, it's a, it's a national, like, like problem that we have. So, um, I mean, it kind of makes me understand that, you know, your life can be taken at any moment. Um, so, I mean, kind of like um, respect, like, the situation that I have um, with the security that we have on campus and stuff. So, uh, I think we, we do definitely need to make this um, an important, like, situation for for the worldwide like we got to you know do something about this so um we need to kind of like um continue our focus towards that so uh jaquan um it was, it was an hour away from us so you know it impacted us you know, a lot i think the next game we had wore uh, t-shirts for them uh in the pre-game warm-up you know it's just something i think that should be handled you know in a very, very calm way by the you know, government and you know, things like that around the world. And then uh, Lonnie, you can finish it up. Um, 
It was definitely a, a, a difficult time for myself because I have a couple of friends who had family and friends that also went to that school. So, you know, seeing the, the negativity and the uh, people upset and crying, it, it definitely impacts you in a personal way. Just knowing, you know, what Chris said, it can, you know, it can happen at any moment, at any time. You just be at the right, wrong place at the wrong time. And, you know, that's, that's the end of your life. Most of those kids went to that school not expecting that to be that their last day living. You know, most of those people went to that school to get educated, be knowledgeable, and learn and look forward to, you know, their future life. So the fact that it got taken for, for granted, you know, it got taken away so quickly, it's definitely one of the saddened things. So um, it definitely has to, you know, be struck, especially because of this national walk, and we have to take this seriously because um, Lord knows what, what could happen next, but it's all about how we want to make a change. Okay, guys, we'll go on your left here on the aisle. Right here. Uh, Wendell Barnhouse and the Athletic for Chris. Um, Lonnie has really seemed to kind of take on a really leadership role, uh, particularly once uh, Bruce went down. The What have you seen out of him during the year since you're kind of fellow freshman and what kind of a leader and player is he to you? Uh, like you said, when Bruce went down, um, it was kind of like a collective team. Like we, we got each of us got to step up into bigger roles. And for Lonnie, um, I mean, I think for him it was more so of a, a scorer. Like we need we need to put more points on the board. Um, and Lonnie's one of those guys who leads by actions. Um, in practice, he works hard. Um, in the game, he's he's trying to um, you know kind of get everybody up on that energy level so we can. You know, continue to play uh, play well, even if we make a bad play. So, um, I mean, but it's been multiple guys. We got a lot of different guys who lead in different ways on this team. Like Jaquan Newton, he's senior. Um, I mean, he tries to get us all on the same page. Um, definitely prepares us well for the game uh, to go out there and get the best effort. So, um, it's been multiple guys on this team to help um, take up for Bruce's role. We'll stay on the left. I want to ask you guys again about the, the Cinderella thing. Uh, the Loyola guys that were here before and their coach said that they're not buying into that, that they fully respect that you guys are number three in the ACC and all that. Does it serve, uh, yesterday when you were getting on the bus, there was a little bit of a chip on the shoulder, like we need to go prove that we really are better, and does it add extra fuel to see that so many people are picking you guys to lose the first game? Who is that for again? Okay, um, Jaquan, why don't you start? I mean, uh, I think it don't matter you know, who you play coming to this tournament, you always have a chip on your shoulder. Um, but like I said, you know, it don't matter if we play uh, Loyola or any other team, we always going to have that chip on our shoulder have, like we have you know, all year. And like I told you know, the reporter, we got a lot of respect for the team. We watch film, they're really talented. Okay, we'll go toward the back. Yeah, Kevin Brockway, Games will send a question for Chris. For a, uh, a guy your size, he seemed to have an ability to get your shot off. How much of that is innate, and how much of that's been kind of developed over time? Um, for me, I've, I've always been small. So, um, I mean, I think, it, like you said, developing over time, just um, developing different ways to create space so I can get my shot off. Um, I mean, I've, I've been playing basketball for, like, 13 years now. So... Um, it's just been a development, um, just work, work um, hours in the gym and stuff. So um, that's pretty much it. Other questions? Okay, we'll go back to the left. Uh, Bruce Brown, you know, everyone's wondering, is he going to play? I know he's going to be dressed tomorrow. Uh, what do you anticipate from him? Do you think he'll play tomorrow or possibly Saturday if you made it there? And what would he bring if he comes back to the team? As of right now, Bruce, I'm pretty sure I won't be playing. But I mean, even besides playing on the court, the way he leads, the way he uh, brings the energy on the bench is, is something that truly can't be explained. Um, he uplifts us in a in a huge way without even dribbling the ball or shooting it or you know telling people what to do. He's kind of just there, bringing that energy all off the court and um, helping us succeed. So. Uh, regardless if he's playing or not, he definitely brings uh, that energy, you know, consistently day by day. 
Okay, closing questions now for our student athletes. We'll go here on the right, outside aisle. Josh Peter Ian with USA Today for Lonnie. Um, your hair is like artwork, looks like sculpture. How long did it take to get that way, and what kind of response do you get on the court and it's walking around campus for that matter? Uh, <laughs> I kind of I kind of get that that question at least twice a day. Um, you know, people are truly surprised with how different it is. I kind of let it grow up by itself. I mean, it's its own person at this point because ever since my freshman year, it was a regular flat top. Then going into my junior year, it was still a flat top. Then senior year, it just became its own. I mean, people have been calling it a pineapple. So, uh, and the student sections definitely have a, a fun way of, you know, pleasing and tell, telling me what type of names it is. So, uh, it, it's my thing. It defines who I am, just being a different person and a different kid. So, uh, all I can say is, you know, it's, it's, it's pleasing to know that people are, you know, truly delighted to look at my hair consistently. <laughs> Okay, any other questions for the three guys? All right, here on the uh, left toward the back. Chris Hayes, Orlando Sentinel. Uh, this is going to be for any of you guys. Uh, how much pride do you take in getting this program to, to where the level it is right now, especially a, a school that's considered a football school, really? And um, like I said, for any of you guys. Jaquan, you want to answer that? Um, yeah, um, uh, when I first came here my freshman year, like, uh, the games were different. They weren't like sold out how they are now. And I think uh, me and my teammates, we did a great job of, you know, leading on the, on the court, just uh, try to get fans there by winning games. And uh, my sophomore year, we went to the Sweet 16. And then my junior year, we went back to the tournament. So I think uh, we turned this program you know, around a lot. And I think uh, it's, it's best just to come. All right, guys, thank you very much for coming today. I know you have practice coming up in about 20 minutes. Thank you for being here, and good luck tomorrow. We'll see you again up here. Thank you. Coach will be here in just a second. Okay, we are now joined by the head coach of the uh, Miami Hurricanes, uh, Coach uh, Jim Laranega. Coach, uh, welcome to North Texas. Your thoughts as you begin uh, tournament play. Uh, just in, in case you're interested in wondering if, if I'm going to try to change my hairstyle to do the, the pineapple look like Lonnie has, the answer is no. My wife told me I wouldn't, wouldn't look good that way. Um, secondly, we are very excited to be here in Dallas. Uh, my brother used to uh, live here. My brother and his wife um, lived here in Dallas for, I, I think, about uh, 20 years. And we used to come and visit. And um, I've done a lot of speaking engagements for the corporate world here in Dallas and, and uh, just love uh, when we've come to Texas. Um, my team is very young. We have five freshmen, four sophomores, uh, two juniors and only one senior. Uh, but it's a great group of guys, lots of youthful enthusiasm. As I think you can see, they have a lot of personality. Uh, our freshman guards, Chris Likes and Lonnie Walker, are really dynamic uh, athletes and fun to coach and, and fun to watch play, quite frankly. And then we've got a, a, a group of front court guys that have really improved during the course of the season. And it's one of the main reasons uh, we're here in Dallas. Thank you, Coach. Questions? Okay, here on your right, Coach, toward the middle. Uh, coach, first question, uh, what kind of player was Loyola AD Steve Watson when he played for you? <laughs> He's back in the room. Yeah, uh, Steve Watson, the, the athletic director at Loyola Chicago, is one of my former players, and we stayed in touch over the years. Just a great young man, a great family man. He and his wife, Ann, have, have a beautiful family. 
Uh, Steve is almost 6'10", could really shoot the three, was an outstanding passer, had a very, very nice low post game with a little right-handed jump hook. Um, he, he could use some work uh, defensively, um, but I believe he's still playing today. He plays in all those three-on-three -three events and uh, kind of in the old man's league now, uh, but he was a, a very smart basketball player. And when I, when I, I, I look at uh, Porter's team, it, they, they kind of are, are similar to the way Steve played, really share the ball well, really shoot the ball well, and they shoot at a very, very high percentage, both from two-point and three-point range. Report on the follow-up on the scouting report about this Loyola team. You could say it's David and Goliath. Looking at your size, again, you know, not just the seating, but what do you see from this team, particularly defensively, that could pose a problem for your ball club? Well, I think the whole key is is in uh, Loyola's case. They've got a lot of experienced guys. They're older guys. Uh, they have two kids who have transferred in from other schools, sat out, now are playing at a very, very high level. They've got the player of the year in Clayton Custer. They've got the defensive player of the year uh, in Ben Richardson. Uh, they got the freshman of the year in, in uh, uh, Cameron uh, Crutwig. And they just got a, a really good, skilled basketball team at both ends of the court. They play very good team defense. They play very good sharing of the ball team offense. We'll stay here on the right. Yeah, Kevin Brockway, Gainesville Sun. Jim, I'm sure you're aware that uh, – Loyola came into Gainesville and, and beat the Gators last December earlier this year. I didn't know if you maybe reached out to Mike White or anyone on their staff to kind of pick their brain about them, or uh, what does that say about their team that they could beat a high major team uh, on their home floor? No, the University of Florida's got a great basketball program, great team this year. They're in the NCAA. I think they're also seated six like we are. And uh, my staff and I have watched that game repeatedly uh, to see how Loyola – approach the game, how they played the game. Maybe the most impressive thing about it was uh, Clayton Custer got hurt in the first half and didn't even play in the second half, and they still were able to pull out the victory, uh, showing you like what kind of player Towns is. He moved from like the three to the one and did a great job of ball handling. Uh, so they're just a well-rounded team, well-coached team. Uh, uh, Porter Mosa worked with uh, Rick Majerus who to me is a, one of the legendary uh, coaches, a tremendous defensive coach. And I, I see a lot of, of, of Rick's uh, influence on, on this Loyola team. Is that Michelle? In Dallas? They sent you here. <laughs> OK, we'll get the microphone here in just a second. Okay, ask away. Um, can you talk about Bruce Brown and what he, you know, do you expect, I know you've been sort of saying he's going to dress, but he's not going to play. Is there any chance at all that he would play at all in Dallas? And whether he does or he doesn't, what does he bring the team? No, Bruce Brown is, is a unique personality. And when, when we recruited him, uh, I kind of anticipated that, that, just getting to know Bruce is, is a real joy. Bruce has tremendous personality and energy. And I, I heard Lonnie Walker describe that. He's got great natural leadership qualities. And even though he's been injured and hadn't played in the last six weeks, he still has had an impact on our team. And if you'll notice him during the game at timeouts, he's the one getting up and talking to his teammates about what's going on. So, yeah, he'll tell someone, hey, you got to block that guy out. That guy's a heck of an offensive rebounder. Or, hey, don't dribble so much. There's an open man. you got to hit the open man. So he's, he's, he's not a coach, but he is definitely a leader. And, you know, he sat out for six weeks. The foot has healed beautifully. Uh, the doctors have cleared him. But he's not in basketball shape. So he, he's going to have to rehab uh, uh, and get himself in great shape before he ever steps out on the court and – you know, unless we're able to advance uh, into April and May, you know, chances are he's not going to play. Hey, Coach, we'll uh, come over here on the right side. Yeah, Kevin Brockway, Gainesville Sun. Uh, Jim, uh, Miami, Florida, Florida State, all in the NCAA tournament for the second straight year. What does that speak to the basketball level in the state uh, college-wise? 
Yeah, I, I think one of the interesting things that has happened over the decades, once the Orlando Magic and the Miami Heat uh, started up back in the 80s, basketball at all levels has improved dramatically in the state of Florida. And it starts at, at the grassroots. It's the elementary schools playing a lot of basketball. We've always been a great football and baseball state. But now you'll see some of the best athletes choosing to play basketball. And now you have a lot of in-state kids being recruited uh, all around the place. I don't know how many uh, high school seniors out of the state of Florida are playing in this tournament, but I'm, I'm sure it's quite a few. We only have two. We'd love to have a lot more, but we have Anthony Lawrence and Dewan Yule, two of our starters, our terrific uh, college players coming out of uh, the state of Florida. Okay, we'll go toward the back here on the left, Coach. Coach Chris Hayes, Orlando Sentinel. Uh, can you speak to the, the progression of the program, especially since you've gotten there and the level of what it is right now, uh, I think three years straight NCAA? Yeah, um, when my staff and I arrived in 2011, uh, there were three things that everybody said we, we wouldn't be able to do. Number one, we'd never be able to beat Carolina or Duke. Number two, we'd never win an ACC regular season or tournament championship. And number three, we'd never be able to draw consistently good crowds uh, to our home arena because people didn't have that much interest in basketball. Well, we've been able to compete pretty well with Duke and Carolina. We've won our share. Uh, second, we've already won a regular season and a tournament championship. And for the third year in a row, we've been sold out for every home game. And as you mentioned, this is now our th third straight NCAA tournament appearance. So we feel like we've laid the foundation for a successful basketball program, and we're trying to build on that tradition. Our football and, and baseball programs have won national championships. Football has won five, baseball has won four. You know, we, we feel like we're, we're building a foundation that maybe one day we'll be fortunate enough uh, to win our first. Okay, Coach, here in the middle on the right. Uh, Coach, you know, firsthand an 11 seed can pull off an upset. Uh, I've heard that. You've, <laughs> you've been through that. Uh, what do you think is going through the minds of the Loyola players in terms of motivation, and, and how are you alerting your own players that, hey, don't look past this team because they're an 11 seed and we're a 6 seed? Well, uh, as far as I'm concerned, my experience says in, in, the seeding doesn't mean that much. It's how well you play. Uh, and my George Mason team back in 2006 happened to be a number 11 seed. And we beat the sixth seed, which was, was Michigan State at the time. Uh, I, I, I think very, very clearly the success that you've enjoyed during the regular season and that Loyola has enjoyed both during the regular season and in their conference tournament is going to give them a lot of confidence. Now, they haven't lost in a very, very long time. They've won 10 in a row, 18 of their last 19 games. So you know they're going to believe that they can win this game. The challenge for our Miami team uh, is we need to play at a very, very high level uh, to compete with them. They're actually the favorite in, in terms of, if, if you read all the prognosticators, they're, they're calling them the uh, Cinderella already. And uh, we've got to be sure that we understand that the, the caliber of our opponent has uh, earned an awful lot of respect and that there's only one way for us really uh, to earn that, that same kind of respect, and that's to play great tomorrow. Closing questions for Coach. Anything else? Okay, we'll go here in the front row. The mic will be here in just a second. Okay. Just following up on that, why do you think, even though they have had all the success this year and everything you just said, why do you think so many people are picking them to win this game? You know, years ago, uh, the, the discussion was always uh, surrounding the RPI. And there was a lot of complaint the RPI was not really good or what have you. Uh, since that time, there have been a lot of other uh, statistical uh, websites that you can go to to analyze uh, teams. Uh, the one I'm most familiar with is Ken Pomeroy's KenPom.com. And the thing that's most impressive about Loyola is their Ken Palm numbers how efficient they are offensively, how efficient they are defensively. And I think that's one of the reasons why 
uh, the prognosticators are looking at them as a team that's already proven that they can play uh, great basketball at both ends of the court. And I also am a great believer in Ken Palm as well. Okay, any other questions for Coach? I don't think so. Coach, we'll let you get ready and go to practice. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Good, good luck tomorrow.